welcome back. We are here working on week six, the last of the problem sets. We are working on DNA. First thing we're going to check here because it is at the top of our to do's is check for command line usage. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check the command lines. When you plug in Python DNA, you have database large and you have sequence five and then it outputs lavender. So when you look at these examples, the one thing that you can see is that the usage here is taking three inputs, right? DNA, data, sequence, DNA, data, sequence. So we have three command line arguments that we need to do. Since the notes are already here, we're just going to use what we were given. So we're going to go with if len and we need system argument argv and we need to make sure it's exactly three arguments so just like that and we need to do print and it's usage python dna dot pi data dot csv and sequence dot text close that out and we need a system exit and we're going to use one just like that so this way if you enter anything less than the three necessary arguments this will be the print error message here and will exit the system with an error code of one so you will know where in the function that that error has come from and the error message is right here usage python dna data so we put in exactly what they want to put so if you put in the wrong information it tells you the information that you need to put in otherwise it returns an error of one letting us know that that's the function that we need to get out of now we're going to work on those three arguments individually we're going to be starting with argv1 which is read database file into variable so let's get into that so the first thing we're going to do here is with open and it's going to be system argv1 to make sure we're working on the first argument and we're going to use a read file and we're going to open that as database file and now in the reader it's going to be csv.dictreader of database file and database is going to be equal to the row for rows in row for row whoop, in reader so this function we're using the uh, system argument one right and we're using the open to open what we're calling database file and then we're using the csv dict reader to create a dictionary reader from database file so the reader object can then read the contents row by row and store each of them in a dictionary with a column of names and key values of the corresponding cell values, right? So then database variable is created by iterating through each row in the reader and then adding it to the dictionary, meaning that the database variable is now a list of dictionaries where each dictionary is a row of what's in the CSV file. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, just put it in the comments, let me know. And now we're going to move on to the next function, the next argument here. So let's move this up, read DNA sequence file into variable. So what we're going to do is with open and it's going to be sys.argv and it's going to be our second argument this time uh, as reader and we're going to call this as sequence files and we're going to do sequence equals sequence file dot read and that will read the DNA sequence file into a variable. Next, it wants us to find the longest match of each string in the DNA sequence. So we need stir counts uh, equals, so for key in database uh, zero dot keys, whoops, keys colon if the key is equal to name then continue oops continue uh, otherwise steer accounts key equal longest match and you're going to do sequence 
uh, and then key. So now we have a dictionary called stir counts, right, and that we're creating right here. Uh, and we're going to loop through the keys in the first row of our database, which is the CSV file that contains information about people and their DNA. If the key is name, we skip it because we don't want to count a name. So for every other key, which is represented by the STR in the DNA, we're going to call a function called longest match. And then we'll pass that into the DNA sequence and the key as an argument. So the longest match function is going to count the longest run of the STR in the DNA sequence and return that value. And then we store that value in something called stir counts dictionary uh, with the STR as the key. So at the end of this code, we'll have a dictionary that tells us how many times each STR appears in the DNA sequence. Again, if it doesn't make sense yet, it may in the future. Otherwise, ask questions and I can further explain it. Finally, we need to check the database for matching profiles. So let's get into this one. So we're going to do for row in database is going to be match equal true, capital T on that. And we're going to do for key in row dot key and put an S on that one, colon. If the key is equal to name, oh, lowercase name, then we need to continue. But if int row key is not equal to the str counts of the key colon match equal false capital F and we're gonna break out if match then we're going to print row name close that out and we already have our return here but let's get it where it needs to go and and then we are going to go back in here two more and print quote no match oops match and let's move our print function down real quick so in this part of the code we're trying to compare the DNA sequence that we read earlier in the database of individuals that we read from the CSV file so we're looping through each row in that database to check if there are any individuals in the database that match the DNA sequence and in each row of the database we loop through each key except for the name and compare that to the times that STR appears in the DNA sequence with the value in the row for that STR if there's a mismatch for any of the keys, we move on to the next row in the database. So if all the keys in the row match the number of times that the corresponding STR appears in the DNA sequence, then we found a match and we print out the name of the person that's in that cell or in that row. If we go through all the rows in the database and we don't find a match, then we simply print no match. So overall, what we're doing is our program's taking the DNA sequence and the CSV file containing the DNA the DNA profiles. It then searches for matches between the DNA sequence and the profiles in the CSV file which have been provided to you. The program reads the CSV file and the DNA sequence files into variables. Then it searches for the longest match of each short tandem repeat (STR) in the DNA sequence. An STR is a sequence of DNA that repeats itself consecutively. So then the program checks the CSV file for the profile that matches the STR counts found in the DNA sequence. If a match is found, then the name associated with that profile is printed. If no match is found, then the program prints no match. And as in our first function, if the user does not put an input that was required in the command line, then the program prints the usage information and exits. Hopefully that makes sense. DNA is a little weird because as programmers, we're not familiar with maybe DNA or short, short tandem repeat. Hopefully it makes sense. Questions, comments, whatever you guys have, drop them in there. I'm here for you. So let's run a check on this thing real quick. So DNA, run your program as, and it should output Bob. First, let's get into CD DNA, and let's see if we can find Bab. It says we have an error on line 24. Looks like I forgot a colon, and I did. So let me get that in there. And we're going to try and find Bob again. And it looks like I put RV. RV on line 13 instead of argv. So let me go in there. 
Makes sense. I'm trying to find Bob again. Now I have an error on line 34, so let me get to there. So it looks like I've got some loop issues here. I'm going to fix those now. This if loop needs to be outside of that. And then our stir counts is also a little bit wonky. So even though Python didn't tell me it's out of place, because technically the program wasn't really out of place, but it just wouldn't run right. Let's see if getting those loops fixed will help us out. And we found Bob. All right, so let's take a look. Let's see if we can find Ron real quick. Perfect, let's run our check. And let's move this up real quick. It correctly identifies all the sequence we need, which means you are all set. Congratulations on finishing week six. That was DNA. I am Devin. As always, you guys are awesome. If these videos are helpful, like, comment, subscribe. Look forward to seeing you guys in week seven.